going to meet you at the museum at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Just a quick pass through the museum here, and you see the sort of telegraph key collection they got here. He said, that's it. He said, you're not telling anybody else. I told him to call you. And he said, no, he said, you give him the message. Mechanical scanning TV. This is the entryway to the museum, and you see all of the keys here, or part of the AWA collection of keys. A vertical vibroplex, there's a rotoplex. There's one that can be used right, left, or as a straight key. What we have here, Neil, is a 1925 radio store. In other words, in the early days, you used to make your own radios. Mm -hmm. And you would uh, get the Sunday paper and they'd have the latest schematic. You'd dash down to the radio store and you'd buy these parts, go home, lay it out, and work on the kitchen table for the next couple of weeks. And put it together so, yourself. Yes. These are all the parts that you'd find to build these receivers. Now, most of the receivers before the war, everything was sparked. Uh -huh. This is 1911. Now, I'm it's surprised that I don't now. hear that spark in the Pardon? recording behind me. Pardon? You know, I'm surprised I don't hear that spark in the recording behind me. Yeah, well... Okay. Then, well, if I would... We got a thunder, we got a watch over the storm. Okay, so I would think that this running this spark here would tear up every radio in the neighborhood. Okay. Fourteen. They wanted a better spark. Yeah. So they put a wheel or a rotary gap in here. Wow. Okay. This is a quarter kilowatt. There's another now, quarter kilowatt. Now the reason why we don't let people up here is five thousand volts here. Even this switch has a hundred and ten. Yeah. We don't, we don't want people up here. This room has been used for many, many movies. The PBS movie, Empire of the Air. Uh -huh. All the code in Empire of the Air, the PBS movie, was recorded here. Okay. All the radios in that PBS movie were recorded here. Now, this is the one that has the signal of a Titanic. This has been in many productions. This is the exact signal of the Titanic. This is a thousand watt punch gap spark transmitter. And I'll show you how it works in a minute. Uh, let's see. All these other spark transmitters are non synchronous. Mm -hmm. That means it sparks anywhere of the 60 cycles. This does not. This sparks on the peaks of the 60 cycles. And that's because of the motor synchronizing? Well, you're going to find out in a minute. Okay. There are 120 peaks, 60 pluses, 60 minuses. Sure. The objective is to make a spark on the plus or the minus. Never on the curve down or on that slope up. You do that if you have a synchronous motor. A synchronous motor multiplies on a, revolves on a multiple of 60. All right. 1,800, 2,400, 3,600s. This is 3600, and 6 goes into 36. Now, this one turn brings it to 200 meters, to resonance. That's the antenna pickup coil. This is just the way it was taken off the air 70, 80 years ago. Hmm. Now, you stand over here, you can see it works. This is lethal, and this is the reason we keep the door locked. Now, you want to stand where I am here and shoot in on it. Oh, I'm okay. Going to, I'm going to sink, sink the gap, as they call it. Yeah. Now, okay, so you sink it for the minimum 
noise, the minimum Minimal noise, it's, it's fine. You get the maximum transfer and the best note. Oh, okay. Now, uh, that had a tone over the air then, too, didn't it? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Very nice tone compared to the non sync caps over there. Yeah. This is the Cadillac, the Clap ESAM. That's a thousand watt Clap ESAM spark transmitter. Now, it has about a hundred points, so it makes a high pitched whistle spark. Okay. Very, very rare. You will never see another. I don't care where you go. Or 22. This is amateur equipment after the war. This is the transmitter we have on 160 meters. In 1920, 21, 22, actually you're on 200 meters. Mm -hmm. So it's designed for 200 meters. We just tapped down on the coil. We ended up on 160. Right. What's These the, what's are the chemical rectifiers down here. What's the frequency uh, now? So, 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 so is that like a TNT type this, oscillator? Oh no, this is a Hartley oscillator. Okay, driver, Hartley. And a 203 final. Oh, okay. This is Heising modulation, single button mic. All right. Heising modulation. And if you yell in the mic loud enough, you get about 30% modulation. It's high level. Okay. Those are chemical yeah, would, so we sort of really went over this station right here really fast. What do we okay. have on the far left here, for instance? Yes, we're very fortunate. This is an REL station. REL, by the way, made most of the transmitters for our major Armstrong. Uh huh. This is a Hartley oscillator of 1927. This is a receiver of 1927. Now these are commercial transmitter and receiver. They made very few commercial sets. Most amateurs made their yeah. own transmitters and receivers. Yeah, yeah. Now so these are commercial, both commercial pieces. Okay. Self-excited oscillator, two two uh, four stage. See, then you you'd bias this so it wouldn't take off. Yeah. Trying to, okay. So then that is a, as far as the circuit, crystal, it's a... Just conventional circuit. Okay. Crystal, for, 19, for 47, driving a 210, mm -hmm. buffer or driver, and a 203 in the final. All right. What about the receiver there? The receiver is a very rare receiver. Uh, that's the Round the World 4, Silver Marshall, Round the World 4. And it's one of the very first commercial shortwave receivers available to the public, mm -hmm. about 1930. What does performance like that compare with like the SW3? Uh, not as good. Not as good. Why is that? Because the SW3 had two tuned stages. This has an untuned stage and only one tuned stage. Okay. And the coil is on top. And that's what I have against the receiver. Here you got a beautiful shield and you put the coil on top yeah, of the darn yeah. thing. What, what's, the, what's the two veneer, what's the, what's the, what's the two dials? Or is that uh, the band, the band, band spread? That's band spread yeah. in general it's coverage. Okay. cards of the early 1920s. You'll notice there's no W in front of them. Yeah, yep. In fact, I've seen some have a U in front well, of them. Why have a W? Well, no, well, if you're the only. You only worked within the states. Yeah, However, yeah. By 1925-26, you started to work outside. So, in the United States, they put a U in front of it. Uh huh. In Canada, they put a C in front of it. Well, then there are other countries starting with U and C. So then they put the, the continent, North America, United States, Canada, you can't see it, but it's North America, it's Canada, and C. Mm -hmm. They did this all over the world. Mm -hmm. Some of them used peculiar combinations. But in 1927, there was a national conference, and they all agreed that uh, they should... Um, so they partialed up the letters and... Yeah. Why don't you stand back and, and take a picture of it? Stand over there, Neil. Now that's an amateur transmitter. <laughs> These little Japanese icons and candles. <laughs> now there is a real transmitter. What are the three racks? The two tubes down here, there are the modulators, 851s. Okay. And the tubes in the final are UV204As. And in the final up there, the modulators there, the drivers over here. And, and in the far rack is receiver and power supply. Look okay, like. this is the original HRO made by James Miller. This is his personal transmitter. And we have it on the air. It's on AM, 75 AM. Now, when he made this, he made it for 20 meters because he had a friend at the ARRL staff and he wanted to talk to New Zealand. And he'd come over to his house and talk to New Zealand and Australia regularly. And this is the transmitter he used 
Because I said I work in Australia and New Zealand. But when we obtained it, uh, we didn't want to work 20 meters because we've got two Collins transmitters over here. See? Yep. One is on 20 and the other one's on 75 or whatever. We've got a small rhombic here. So it'll work on any band, any frequency. What was but we go on the air with us. This is a beautiful set, believe me. And now, what's the power hit it? We're on a kilowatt if you want, but oh, you okay. can't run a kilowatt. It's still legal. Yeah, I can't run AM, AM kilowatt anymore, yeah. Well, you throw this on the air, it sounds like a broadcast station. How about it, Dex? Yep, it does. He works, he works us. <laughs>